So, welcome back to the news for January 27th, 2012. And the big news of the week was that Funimation has announced they are suspending production of the Dragon Ball Z Blu-ray releases. And this caught some people by, by storm, or by surprise. Um, they announced this, this uh, basically last week. They've suspended production on all future Blu-ray releases of DBZ TV series, including the level 2.1 that was originally scheduled for March 27th. Um, basically, they said uh, it's th there are uh, challenges of restoring the original film, and it's just and it, reading between the lines. Um, there is not enough fan demand to make the restoration process that's required for the Blu-ray release to make sense. It just costs too much money to make the Blu-ray releases. So I think I, I'm actually glad about that because it means that they're not going to spend a lot of money on something that is not as popular as it used to be. You know, Funimation's had a, or Dragon Ball Z's had a huge run, and it's, it's sold incredibly well for decades. I think it's time now for that to have somewhat less of a, uh, of a demand that it used to, be, used to be. So, in other words, don't take that as a sign that Funimation's going to collapse anytime soon. That's just fine. Um... And, uh, and as uh, like Giza pointed out in our chat room, that certainly does not mean the Blu-ray will not be the, the, you know, the, the production of the future. It's just that you know, you're probably going to have to wait a while for that, that Blu-ray release of Dragon Ball Z. And to be fair, we're not getting you know, beautiful Blu-ray releases of a lot of other classic anime series that came out the same time that Dragon Ball Z did. So you guys have been lucky. You know, spread some joy out to some of the other anime series at the time. Uh, moving on, so let's go to some of the... Uh, well, while we're talking about Funimation, Funimation has uh, posted on their site a licensing survey, basically asking um, which of these titles would you buy if Funimation were to um, uh, license them and release them in roughly the same way that they license their current stuff. Um, so they listed a whole bunch of stuff uh, that came out recently, uh, Ben Toe, Future Diary... Go Sick, Guilty Crown, Last Exile Fam, Nichi Joe, R15, Tatami Galaxy, even Twin Angels, things like that. So it's, it's quite a few. It's, it's a, I think, about two dozen titles on the list. So head over to Funimation.com and uh, see if you can be part of that, and, and maybe you can help push Funimation in one direction for a particular series. It's always nice to see a company that is willing to go to the fans and say, hey, you know, um, this obviously won't be the be-all final vote because some things will be easier to license than others. But at least, you know, we get a say, which is awesome. Meanwhile, uh, uh, in the New York Times bestseller list news, this was actually uh, a bit surprising. Um, I went back through the New York Times bestselling manga list of the past week, and we were talking about this earlier before the show. Um, where's Bleach? Because it's not on the top ten... This week, and I don't think it was there last week. So apparently Bleach is not quite as popular as it used to be, which is, is quite interesting. For the record, the top manga of the past week was Sailor Moon Volume 3, and the second one was Sailor Moon Volume 2. So the Sailor Moon re-release doing, doing extremely well. This is a somewhat more accurate re-release of the original Sailor Moon. Uh, that's followed by Naruto Volume 54, Twin Spica Volume 11, One Piece Volume 60, then Blackbird, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Rosario Plus Vampire Season 2, uh, another Naruto and Bengeki Daisy Volume Eight. So there we go. So kind of an interesting thing. Uh, you know, we'll see where Bleach goes. Moving back into the anime world, um, uh, Nico Nico Doga has announced they will be streaming Black Rock Shooter, the TV anime series coming up February February third, with subtitles in eight different languages, which is kind of awesome. So I'm assuming that means um, they will be. Well, here's the interesting thing. They did not say simulcast, and nowhere in the announcement have they mentioned simulcasting. So, um, let me just look down here, and it looks like... Um, it looks like there will be a, a delay, um, so it won't be like the, necessarily the exact day of the release. Um, like, it looks like it will be a day or two afterwards. Um, but it, it will be um, available in uh, English, French, Italian, German, Spanish, Korean... A traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese, and it will be available in the lang in the countries that those languages apply to. So the U.S., Canada, France, Belgium, Italy, Germany, Spain, Mexico, South Korea, they'll all get to watch that on Nico Nico Doga. So that's pretty awesome that uh, we're going to get that series just 
Straight up. Boom. Done. Um, so good on the the folks there. Moving on. Um, in other anime news, uh, uh, there's a new anime series coming out called Apollon. Uh, Sakamichi no Apollon, which is rather interesting for the fact that the director is Shinichiro Watanabe of Cowboy Bebop, and the composer is Yoko Kano, also of Cowboy Bebop. So that's pretty awesome. Um, uh, and uh, Nobuteru Yuki, who directed, uh, or, I'm sorry, did character designs for Lotus Wars and Escaflone, will be do doing the character designs. Um, and it's, it looks like a, a pretty high-end uh, thing. So that, that's pretty awesome. That we're, we're getting uh, a couple of those folks back to do uh, uh, a new series. Kind of age story, naive boy, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so, awesome. Some, some more from bits of that team. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, also in upcoming... On oh, actually, not even upcoming anime news. Um, so the uh, Full Metal Alchemist movie is currently in release around the U.S. and uh, various countries around the U.S. And it has been announced that its release has been doubled. For every country that it's been in, it will be there for twice as long. That said, it was originally planned to be in each of these cities for a couple of days up to a week. So... Yes, I'm sorry, cities, not countries. Um, so, yes, uh, so if you're in Miami and you wanted to see it, and it was originally going to be there for three days, now it's going to be there for six. Um, you know, Minneapolis is going to have it for a week, now they're going to have it for nine days, actually only a two-day extension. So some of these actually are a little less. I didn't, I didn't see that. But most things are a week to two weeks, or like three days to six days. So there we go. Um, and uh, just skimming down here a little bit... Um, uh, these announcements are all for cities in the U.S. I know it, it, it has been released in Canada as well, but I don't see those on this list of extensions. So, not sure there. Uh, let's see here. Um, right, moving on to some streaming news. This is quite interesting. Uh, Toonzaki mentioned on its, fa on its Facebook page this week that uh, after Mega Upload was shut down, Toonzaki saw a 20% spike in views. Hmm. They also reported that their Hulu numbers are significantly higher. So apparently, the Death of Mega Upload has meant that the, the legitimate sites have seen more traffic. So, square one for the Pirate Hunters, that actually is meaning more of a, a, a push. Now, obviously, a lot of those folks have moved to other pirate sites. But the point is that, yeah, that, that did actually help a little bit. So, you know, I'm not coming down either side of the Mega Upload thing. But that is an interesting, interesting uh, a number there. Let's see here. Uh, moving on to some of the, the sort of lighter news. Um, uh, Wako CL, a famous Japanese pop band, or sort of a rock band, um, J-rock band, uh, who've done a number of, uh, of theme songs, uh, theme songs for Fullmetal Alchemist, Gundam Double O, Motobito, and Kenshin. Um, they have uh, announced as part of their tour that on March 25th, they will be headlining at Madison Square Garden. Hello. Uh, this is the first time a Japanese uh, pop band or Japanese band in general has actually headlined at Madison Square Garden. So that's pretty awesome and amazing that we've seen that sort of penetration of that. And certainly J-pop and J-rock have, have gotten um, you know, increased listenership in America. So that seems to be, be moving on. That, that's awesome. Uh, a couple more things. Um, uh, Yumi Unita, the artist behind Bunny Drop, has announced that she's going to start a new manga called Digital Kiss, which will be a manga about the process of creating a manga. Not like Bakuman, but like, here's how to draw a manga. Here's stuff about screen tones and um, you know, patterns and, and designs and so forth and so on. So that's pretty, pretty awesome. Um, that uh, you'll get someone who's reached a lot of uh, acclaim for the way that she approaches her, her art. You'll be able to see sort of inside her creative process. So that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. Finally, in sort of odd news, um, uh, the upcoming, upcoming Street Fighter X, I'm not up on video games, so I'm assuming that's Street Fighter X and not 10, because there have not been 10 Street Fighter games. Anyway, uh, the upcoming Street Fighter X 10 uh, Tekken, or Street Fighter X Tekken, wah, uh, like I said, I don't know video games, um, have announced that they're going to add uh, uh, two special characters, Pac-Man and Mega Man. Let me, let me repeat that. The Street Fighter X Tekken fighting game will have Pac-Man and Mega Man as playable characters. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. So that's the news for this week. Hope you've enjoyed that, and I hope I will see you here hopefully next week 
for more latest anime and manga news. Until next time, take care.